KM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to HCAM News Live. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in on what's happening in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday from 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News Live, we have highlights from this past week of Hiller's Sports. We get the latest from Hopkinton Little League, and we caught up with Hopkinton Hiller's Boys Varsity Hockey Head Coach Chris McPherson, but first, Hopkinton Police Chief Joseph Bennett recently filled us in with the latest happenings at HPD. Just a great day. So I, I also heard that uh, you had some visitors by your uh, station here uh, in, the, in the shape of uh, Girl Scouts. And they came by to, uh, to uh, thank you. Uh, the Girl Scouts over the years have always been so good, supportive of us, and they treat us so well. It's... Uh, and they, they're just another example of, of the kindness, caring, and generosity of the community. But uh, it, was, it was, I'm sure everybody that was here at the time enjoyed seeing them. Oh yeah, it's 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 so nice when, when they just stop in just to say hello, yeah. you know? They're not looking for a tour. They're not looking to earn a badge. They just come in and just give you the big thank you. Those are huge. Well, we do look forward to, to starting the tours up when we get through this. Oh my goodness, I know, I know. It's, 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 it's awful, I, I still get, overload of boxes of plastic fire helmets at, at my station because we don't get to give them out anymore you know uh -huh. Uh -huh. We'll, so, get it. we'll get there right so let's see uh we you you uh had a couple of new officers start and they sh are they all done with their uh, street training now yep they're all both on the road um we so we have three newer officers we yep. have Cody normandon Brittany firth and nate wright uh they're all all out on the road and uh, and working and uh, so from everything I'm hearing, they're doing a great job, and they're, they're they're a good fit for the organization too. And I and I trust as the community gets to know them, uh, they'll fit right in. Oh, absolutely! They, they all were, were they there beforehand? I know you know, of course, Brittany being a, a dispatcher before I stole her from you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Back. that's okay. We'll just train her and then you take her. Yeah, take her again. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she did a great job in communications and i'm sure she'll do a great job here we're glad glad to have her back uh in our building she, right she was always part of our family but uh even when she she headed east for a little while but uh, uh we're glad to have her back yeah she just needed a little fixer they're just a little tweaking yeah that's <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> so there was uh, a comment that we got here where a person um says that they believe that officers get uh, special training to help people with autism. And I was wanting to speak about it because you know what? If somebody had asked me that, it would never cross my mind that, you know, like that you would have that specialized training. And so if you could talk about any, that, that type of training you get and also any other kind of training that I personally wouldn't think about that you, that you um, people would have. Sure. I mean, the autism training is, is outstanding. And all the instructors are people who are, it's near and dear to their heart, where they have a loved one that is autistic, and then they, they get the, the, the national training, and then they go out and deliver it. You know, it, with, with uh, you know, you might have a 17-year-old autistic male who's 6'4", you know, and we've had them. We've had them grow uh, Autistic uh, members of the community go into a bathroom with a knife. Okay, you know what are we gonna do? We're gonna storm the door? No, you know. So you sit back. Well, what the class teaches a lot of things that you might not know about, say, touch sensitivity. You know, how they don't want to be touched, or sound sensitivity, or uh, proximity. You know, some of these things trigger people with autism. You know, many most. Uh, many, many autistic, autistic people have a, are sensitive to sound. So mm -hmm. controlling the environment, offering separation, 
listening, identifying triggers uh, from, by talking with the parents. Uh, one of the things we have here is a program that we started years ago. Uh, it's called a person at risk. And if you have someone who might be autistic or maybe has Alzheimer's, which is another topic we study, um, or any person that might be of risk in any way, uh, you know, um, people with um, autism and Alzheimer's both in low, right? Which means they leave their home when people might not know. And we do find, we do find people wandering the street at night and that can be very dangerous, especially, you know, in New England in the winter. So <clears throat> uh, we offer this program where, where family members can sign up. It's all confidential, but it gives the patrol officer in the field uh, there's a series of questions like, are they touch sensitive, sound sensitive? Uh, do they have favorite places? So some may be attracted to water or like to go to the train station or will walk to a relative's house. And then it also offers a picture. Um, you know, in Hopkinton, you can, in the middle of the night, you're really looking for the person, right? <laughs> there is a person yeah. right now walking on Grove Street at three in the morning, but uh, the picture is helpful. It is because sometimes they end up, you know, maybe down at uh, on West Main Street at a, at a busy uh, a busy uh, place. Yeah. So that program helps us, but it is that diversity and training that really helps us, you know, that uh, it opens your mind, right? Um, right. You know, it, you know it, it also adds empathy. Uh, the, more, the more exposure you have, um, you know, and I don't want to, Dr. C. McCauley's book that I read at President in Town, you know, diversity, exposure to diversity brings empathy. In. And I agree with, I couldn't agree with him more. Hopkinton Little League executives recently joined us on a recent edition of the Hangout Hour. They gave us some updates about the upcoming season. Here's a look. Sure, this is Georgia Hall, and um, I am the player agent and the equipment manager for Hopkinton Little League, and I've been involved with the board for about four or five years right now um, and have um, also been coaching over um, the last few years also both softball and baseball. Okay, thank you. Claire? I'm the secretary of Hopkinton Little League. I've been on the board for about um, three years now and just recently took over the reins of secretary. And um, I'm a longtime parent. I've had three boys play in the league and um, um, have uh, enjoyed it from a parent volunteer standpoint for many years and decided that it was time to, to help out on a higher level. So um, thank you so much for having us. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. And uh, Jeffrey, hi. Hi, uh, Jeff Streak here. I'm the president for Hopkinton Little League. Um, I've been a volunteer for, gosh, I guess about six years now, um, both as a coach and then just prior uh, board uh, roles. Uh, we're uh, strictly a volunteer driven, um, nonprofit organization. Uh, we're affiliated with uh, Little League International. Uh, we offer both uh, baseball, softball, and then a new program we're launching this year called Challenger. Um, we have approximately uh, 30 uh, board members that occupy different roles um, within the organization. And in terms of volunteers, uh, we average uh, around 130 uh, to 200, depending on the type of season we have. So, Jeff. 130 volunteers? That is a lot of volunteers. Does that include the players? Does not include the players. Um, from a player point of view, uh, in the in what I'll call our, our you know typical best season, which is you know not last year, not this year. Uh, so pre-COVID, we we would have a little over 600 uh, players uh, involved in the program. Um, and we are in Little League is comprised of districts. Uh, we're in what they call District 11, and we're we're the largest program within that district. Um, and it includes some some large towns, uh, Canton, Norwood. Um, so we, we actually do a, a pretty comprehensive program uh, across the board. Um, is that 600 Hopkinton kids? It is. Um, uh, the majority are Hopkinton uh, with the new program uh, that we're launching um, this year officially, uh, the Challenger program. We're actually opening that up to uh, any town with, with uh, you know, that wants to, to join us. Um, so, you know, Southboro, Northboro, 
Holliston, whatever. Um, yeah, we're okay. open to, to those players. Hopkinton Little League this year will be introducing the Challenger program. So uh, the Challenger program was created by Little League International for uh, special needs kids uh, to give them an opportunity to participate um, in game uh, like activities, learn about the game and, and just overall have fun. Um, there's similar programs in, in other sports, uh, basketball, soccer uh, within town. And uh, those programs are also open up to, you know, surrounding communities to, to participate. And uh, we, you know, with our starting challenger, um, we're kind of uniquely, you know, positioned, if you want to call it that, to uh, kind of cater to Metro West. Um, there's, I don't know of another program that's kind of around us that, that's um, offering baseball at the moment. And we saw it as a great opportunity uh, to offer something to those players um, and their families um, that want to play. Uh, it's fully sponsored, uh, which means that uh, similar to basketball and uh, some of the other programs uh, for those players, uh, it's free uh, for them to play. And it's a really cool program. I'm really excited to launch it um, this season. Uh, it also provides abilities for uh, our 12 year old players or alumni players or anyone who wants to volunteer say at from the middle school or high school level to be buddies um, of those players there's a what they term a buddy program and uh, volunteers are paired up with uh, challenger players they are with them from the moment they step on the field to the moment they step off um, and it's just it's a great kind of opportunity for families to watch their players play um, mm. and, and participate if they want or just sit back and, and watch and enjoy. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, we talk with Hiller's Boys varsity hockey coach, Chris McPherson, and we have the latest Hiller highlights plus a whole lot more. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as Mapfree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Welcome back to HCAM News. On our weekly sports show, HCAM Sports Talk Live, which takes place every Wednesday at 3 p.m., we caught up with Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Hockey head coach, Chris McPherson. Here's a look. Uh, things are going pretty well. Uh, you know, we had a little shutdown for a little bit there, but we're uh, back in action and looking forward to our first game in a couple weeks on Wednesday. The uh, team's doing pretty well, 2-1 and one so far. Um, a good win, a tough loss, and a good win. So hopefully we're, we're trending more with the good wins. Absolutely. It was a great win uh, in your last game against uh, Westwood. And you had a good win in one of the games against uh, Norwood as well. Uh, but I thought after a tough 8-1 to loss against Norwood, it was, it was a great rebound win against a talented uh, Westwood team. Uh, can you talk about the uh, talent on the team this year? I know you lost some key pieces from last year's roster, but uh, I think this team is, has some great talent and uh, can certainly do some uh, good things for the rest of the season. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there's definitely been an adjustment period, you know, losing some, you know, some very, very talented players, you know, obviously uh, top score of all time and, you know, I, I would say we probably had the best line in the state last year um, as far as, you know, division two and three with, uh, with that senior group there. But uh, some kids have definitely stepped up this year and some, a lot of kids have a lot of different roles, more expanded roles. And, you know, they've, they've, they've done a good job so far and we just need to, you know, the kids come to the rink every day, you know, working hard to get better 
And, you know, you never know what, what's going to happen after a loss like that. Eight to one loss that we had there. And, um, you know, they turn the page the next day in practice and kids are ready to go in that next game. And I was very, very proud of that response. Like, like you said, that was a great response. It certainly was. Uh, now I know we had this little two week pause on the season, uh, but games should be happening this week. I can't, well, I can't imagine the team was able to practice too much. Did you give them any homework to do to get ready for the rest of the season? Yeah, they. I asked them to watch the Westwood film and uh, put, put some pointers out there, some things to look at specifically, uh, you know, just what we're doing on the four checks, um, you know, D zone coverage, things like that. Uh, how can we improve the power play? Also gave them some off-ice uh, off training to do. I put together a couple of workouts for them. And... Um, We'll see today. Hopefully we'll come back in some good shape. You know, we're right back on the ice today. So we got to get a lot of touches and get those hands back together, get the feet going again and also work teams, you know, the, the team concept work in the second half of the practice because we'll be right down in Medfield in two days. So it's going to come pretty quick. So. Uh, so against uh, Westwood, uh, Colin Norad was tremendous in that. Uh, can you talk about what it's been like to coach him uh, throughout his Hiller's career and how he has come along throughout his years in Hiller's uniform. Uh, yeah, what a what a nice uh, what a nice story that is, uh, Colin. He, you know, last year I you know I was looking ahead and saw that we didn't really have much in the pipeline for goaltenders, and uh, he was a JV player for two years as a forward. I played a little bit of D two, and uh, before the season started, I kind of identified him because he's a strong lacrosse goaltender as someone that I just wanted to throw it out at him, asked him if he wanted to play some goalie. And um, he, you know, he took the challenge, which I was you know, very happy that we, we definitely needed somebody coming into this year uh, as we only have two goaltenders in the whole system. And he's done a tremendous job. His improvement from last year, this year is remarkable, especially, you know, thinking about, you know, the shutdown last spring where, you know, I mean, I know that's his lacrosse time, but he couldn't really get in the ice to do like you know, any of the goalie clinics and things like that. Uh, but once he was able to get in the ice this fall, uh, he, I know he was doing it. I know our other goaltender, uh, Jack Lang, was also there with him um, do, doing a lot of the, the goalie clinics and things like that. And uh, just showed, just improved so much uh, compared to last year where he was. Obviously, it was his first time playing goalie last year, um, but he's, uh, he's a nice little groove right now and, uh, you know, really just really, really good teammate for everybody, really hard worker. Um, doesn't say much, but when he speaks, you know, people listen because, you know, he's one of those types of kids that you, know, you, you, you really want to listen to those kids that really like put the effort in and, you know, do the right things. And he's one of those kids. And, you know, he's going to be going to Springfield College next year to play lacrosse and uh, really, really happy for him that he got a new, his first choice. And uh, like I said, Good success story for Colin, that's for sure. You can see the whole interview at our website, hcam.tv. Despite a couple postponements, Hiller Sports managed to get a few games in. Here's a look at what happened this past week. On Tuesday, January 26th, Hopkinton Hillers girls varsity basketball battled Holliston. In the first quarter, the Hillers had four different point scorers and outscored the Panthers 15 to 8. Driving in, up and in she goes, Kiki Fossbender. Fossbender drives the floor, feeds the wing. Edstrom drives in to the block, up and in. Cho feeds it out, Lulu for three. Count it, knocks oh. it down. She has five points so far tonight. In the second quarter, Kiki Fossbender and Maggie Hedstrom added six points each. Lauren Cho added eight points to help the Hillers outscore Holliston 23-11 in the quarter and take a 38-19 lead into the half. And now we're going to have a steal. Here comes Cho to the bucket. Up, count it. Lauren Cho takes it to the house. Back to Lulu. you got Maggie and Carly Hedstrom both in the game. Lulu to Maggie, up for three, got it! Swish! Nothing but net, 28 to 11 Hillers. Over to Fossbender, back to Cho, for three, got it! Tyrone Hill working the low post. 
Cho over to Millie. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Cho over to Maggie Hedstrom, up for three, swishes it right through. In the third quarter, Kiki Fossbender, Lauren Cho, Maggie Hedstrom, and Lulu Murphy all contributed in a 15 to 10 quarter to up the lead to 53 to 29. Lulu pulls up, turns it around to Fossbender, back to Lulu. Maggie, and Hiller's going to take their time on their possessions. They don't have to rush shots here with a big lead as Maggie knocks down a three. The Hillers' lead would prove to be too much for Holliston to come back from, and Hopkinton took the game 57-37. Lauren Cho had a team-leading 14 points, while Kiki Fosbender added 13 points, and Maggie Hedstrom added 12. The Hillers improved to three wins and one loss overall. Now it's Lulu. Leads it to Ainelli. Now swipes it back, driving in is Kane up and in, and the freshman has her first points in a varsity uniform. And here comes Cataldo. There's Cataldo working her way up the ice towards the net, takes the shot, and look at that, Norwood draws first blood to make it one to nothing. On Wednesday, January 27th, Hillers Dover Sherborne co-op varsity girls hockey played their first home game of the season versus Norwood. The Mustangs of Norwood netted a goal 30 seconds in to the first half. That would be the only goal until Norwood added another goal with 18.39 left in the second half. Stolen away by Nauman. There's a shot and it gets away from McCluskey and in it goes. A short-handed goal for the Norwood Mustangs. McCluskey thought she had that one wrapped up, but it squirted out of her grasp and ends up in the net. The Mustangs of Norwood took the game two to nothing. The Hillers Alpine Ski Team also hosted a meet last Thursday. They finished in second place overall. Here's a look at some of the contest. Good be Kate. Eight oh one. Okay, so yeah, that's Kate coming down the girls' course. Yep. Yep. Kate is a four-year team member and uh, a second-year captain. There she goes. Nicely done, right. Kate. Twenty-four seventy-four. Here comes Jackson. There's Jackson. Go speed racer. Boom. Nice. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Well done. And there you have it, the latest Hillers sports highlights from this previous week. And don't forget, Hillers Alpine skiing will take place at 7 p.m. on HCAM Ed. So be sure to tune in. Let's take a look at the standings for the Hopkinton Hillers from throughout this winter season so far. Boys basketball, they haven't played in a while, unfortunately, due to the postponements, but their last game was a loss to Westwood, and they are currently 2-1 and one on this season. And then you have girls basketball at 3-1 and one after a nice 57-37 win over Holliston. Boys hockey, they haven't played in a while either. They are 2-1 and one. girls hockey. They just played last night. They fell to Norwood in a good battle, 2-0. They're 1-2 and two on the season. And boys indoor track as well as girls indoor track are both 3-0 and on the season. Upcoming sports that you can expect on HCAM as long as everything goes well. Obviously, unfortunately, right now, postponements can happen anytime. But here is our planned schedule. On Tuesday, February 2nd, we have girls basketball. We'll have the freshman game at 3.30. And then we'll have JV and varsity as well. And then on Wednesday, February 3rd, we'll have varsity girls hockey as they take on Medfield at 7 p.m. And then on Thursday, February 4th, we'll have Hillers Alpine skiing at 7 p.m. Then on Friday, February 5th, we are expecting to have boys basketball versus Westwood. Freshman 3.30, JV 5 p.m. and the varsity at 6.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, February 6th, 
Varsity Boys Hockey versus Westwood. That game is scheduled for a 1.40 p.m. start. Also, some big news coming out this week about the Boston Marathon. The Boston Athletic Association announced their expected date for the marathon, which is going to be Monday, October 11th. A virtual race option will also be offered in celebration of the 125th Boston Marathon, but Monday, October 11th, the expected date. Also, Hopkinton Little League registration is open, but you are quickly running out of time. The deadline is January 31st. Head over to HopkintonLittleLeague.org and click register now to sign up your young one for Little League baseball or softball. And this is our picture of the week. The Hopkinton Dover Sherborne girls co-op hockey team hosted their first game of the season on their home ice versus Norwood. And after a few postponements, they finally got that home game in. Unfortunately, Norwood got the win two to nothing, but it was a great battle out there. And all the players happy to be out there on the ice of the New England Sports Center. And also, Bill Morgan of the Golden Spoon opened Morgan's Harbor to the Hill at 8A Lumber Street in Hopkinton. This is a contributed photo, but you could go get some great seafood over at uh, the brand new Morgan's Harbor to the Hill at 8A Lumber Street, owned by the owner of the Golden Spoon, Bill Morgan. And also, we have some government meetings that will be coming up on the HCAM channels on Tuesday, February 2nd at 6 p.m. We'll have the select board meeting. And then on Thursday, February 4th at 7 p.m., we'll have the school committee meeting for the full list of upcoming Hopkinton town government meetings. You can head over to HopkintonMA.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News Live. Don't worry. Next Thursday, we'll be back 6.30 p.m. sharp. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. Thanks for joining us. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon. Have a good night, everybody.